My name is Lindsay Cherrick Waller, and I'm a queer, non-binary artist based in Red Wing, Minnesota. I use they, them, and she, her pronouns, and I'm a studio artist at the Anderson Center. I am a painter, and I paint to create a queer, non-binary world where pleasure can be experienced beyond what capitalism allows. I primarily paint queer, trans, and gender non-conforming people. These are people who have been intentionally removed from the public eye for centuries, and I want my paintings to be a space to document and honor the existence and vibrance of my community. There is so much power in image making, and in many ways, I believe it captures the things that are hard to talk about. It cultivates a space to share dialogue, to consider ideas and experiences we haven't been given words for yet, both intentionally and unintentionally, and in that, influence our language to change and evolve. Ultimately, image making is a way to help us be more imaginative about the world that we want to create and activate us to actually create it. It's March 2021, which means it is International Women's Month. I think this gives us a really great opportunity to reflect on the true history of women's rights and to see the ways that it's been rooted in gender justice all along and understand how homophobia and transphobia are extensions of sexism and misogyny. We've been fighting the same fight the whole time and it's been against cis heteropatriarchy. And like, these big words and big ideas can be intimidating, yes, and part of me believes that it's set up that way to keep so many of us from knowing ourselves and protecting each other. But simply put, um, cis heteropatriarchy is a system where male, sex assigned gender norms and heterosexuality are dominant and they're considered the default and hold power. Bell Hooks reminds us of the ways that these conversations, ideas, and theories can be so gatekept full of jargon and abstract references. It's so ironic that feminist theory accepted in the world's highest circles of academia is incredibly challenging to understand. In many ways, these concepts in feminism have been impossible for much of the world to access. And many folks are afraid to have these conversations because they don't have the words for their feelings or experiences. In her text, Theory as Liberatory Practice, she gives us a way forward and lays the foundation for how I consider femi feminist thought in my work. Quote, There is no one around us who has not felt the pain of sexism and sexist oppression. Making this theory is the challenge before us, for in its production lies the hope for our liberation. In its production lies the possibility of naming all our pain, of making all our hurt go away. If we create feminist theory, feminist movements that address this pain, we will have no difficulty building a mass-based feminist resistance struggle. There will be no gap between feminist theory and feminist practice." End quote. I'm so grateful for the space to discuss these ideas. As an artist and queer, non-binary person, I found a special liberation in learning about queer history because one of the main ways we've experienced depression is the deliberate withholding of our history. We never had access to queer and trans history in public education, and it is through knowing history that we can understand where we are right now and make a better future. When we look at the history of women's rights, we can clearly see how it is deeply queer. In the 1840s and through the 1930s, people were policed and criminalized for challenging gender norms. There were specific cross-dressing laws in place in 21 states across the country. It was illegal for people perceived as men to wear dresses and makeup, and for people perceived as women to wear pants, and for visibly gender non-conforming people to exist in public. These laws are an institutionalized result of Western colonialism and created the gender norms we understand today. The gender sex binary has been a racist tool to naturalize the myth that there are only two genders specifically to distinguish civilized white people. 
the exploitation of slavery created the conditions of domesticity that we see in womanhood. And this is something that black people were not permitted because they were expected to work. We still see the lasting effects of the ways these ideas around gender and race exist today in the women's rights movement. Trans women and femmes, specifically black trans women, experience the highest rates of discrimination, lack of job and housing opportunities, mental health crises and suicide attempts, and outright murder in our country, typically from intimate partners. I think it's the most important thing for us today when thinking about International Women's Month to hold space for trans and non-binary women and consider the ways we uphold the systems of violence that target them. We must do everything we can to prevent anti-trans legislation from passing in our government. We see these attempts all the time, especially since the legalization of same-sex marriage in 2015. Conservative political groups are using anti-trans rhetoric to mobilize their bases for political gain. These bills that are currently being tried in 27 states across the country are full of fear-based claims and using eugenics as a way to convince the public that trans people are a danger to our civilization. The language used in these bills is the same language that has been used to control women's bodies. This isn't about whether trans people are real and if we should allow them gender-affirming care. We know they are. In every medical institution we rely on for the standards of health, say trans and gender non-conforming folks deserve safety, protection, and care. This is about people in power, relying on systems that have kept them in power for decades, by controlling our rights to self-determination. Non-trans people need to care about this too, because if these bills pass at local, state, and federal levels, the same language deemed lawful and constitutional will be used against many more of us in the future. It's up to us to hold our elected officials responsible and ask them to create a safer world for everybody. It is important that we understand sex and gender and how these things are constructed in our society. It is taught that gender is based on our sex. Everything men must be male and everything woman must be female and that's it. This is known as biological determinism. The reality is that both sex and gender are wildly diverse. Things like genes, genitalia, and hormones vary among humans, and categorizing humanity into a binary of male and female doesn't reflect the real biological, neurological, and social lived experiences of many of us. I want to acknowledge that it's easy to dismiss these conversations if you don't know someone who is queer, non-binary, or trans. It's common to overlook these issues if and when and because they aren't personal. And many people in our world spread hateful rhetoric about the LGBTQ plus community because they have so much internalized fear from the same socialization we all experienced. It is typically the people who have been deeply harmed by sexism, homophobia, and transphobia, and have not healed the parts of themselves that have been hurt that perpetuate the most violence. I'll say that again. It is typically the people who have been deeply harmed by sexism, homophobia, and transphobia, and have not healed the parts of themselves that have been hurt, that perpetuate the most violence. We are scared of change, and we fear what we don't understand. I want you to know that regardless of how interested you are in gender justice or queer and trans liberation, this world needs you, and your participation in creating a better world is requested. It starts right here, right where you are, with you and your community. I want to encourage all of us to take time to get to know ourselves beyond what cis-heteropatriarchy has told us or convinced us we are. How does your gender experience feel for you? Are there parts of you that you have had to keep away to fit your preconceived notion of your role and your gender? What can you do to love yourself more? To love yourself so damn much that you're excited to love others. I want us to build a place where we all belong and we are all celebrated for sharing our fullest, most vulnerable, and glimmering selves with the world. I think making art is a great place to start.